Today, we will show you the quick installation process for the Little Giant VCMA condensate pump. Let's get started. Install the pump on a flat level surface with the inlet below the coil drain, making sure not to block the air vents around the motor housing. The pump can also be mounted on a wall using the mounting tabs at each end of the tank. The mounting surface must support the weight of the pump and the water-filled tank. Carefully remove the cardboard insert used to prevent switch movement during shipping. Cut the end of the pipes from the evaporator or furnace drain at a 45 degree angle to prevent the pipes from sealing closed when sitting against the tank's floor. To comply with national building codes, inlet openings are designed for 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. Do not use a smaller diameter pipe for the drain line. The pump will accept up to three drain lines. However, make sure that the total inflow does not exceed the rated output of the pump to prevent overflow. Route drain pipes downward into one or more pump inlet openings, one to three inches, ensuring no interference with float operation. Keep any unused openings closed using the supplied cap plugs. Install 3/8 inch inside diameter, or ID, vinyl tubing to the 3/8 inch outside diameter, or OD, discharge check valve adapter. Use a zip tie to secure the tubing to the adapter. Do not use a metal hose clamp which can over-tighten and break the plastic discharge adapter. Route discharge tubing or piping from the pump straight up as high as necessary. The highest point of discharge tubing should not extend more than 75% of the pump's shutoff head. At the highest point, form an inverted U-shape, sloping the discharge line down, routing the end to a suitable drain below the pump tank level. This will create a siphoning effect, further emptying the tank once the pump stops and improving the overall efficiency of the pump. Connect the power cord to a constant source of power matching the pump's nameplate voltage. The pump should be connected or wired to its own circuit with no other electrical receptacles or equipment in the circuit. Do not connect to a fan or any device that runs intermittently. Connect to a circuit equipped with the Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, or GFCI, if required by code. There are two ways the high-level switch can be connected. The first option is to keep the switch factory wired to the NO and COM terminal. The second option is to reconfigure the switch to the NC terminal. Let's walk through the first option. The switch is factory wired to the NO and COM terminals. This configuration will open or break an electrical circuit when the switch is activated by a high water level in the reservoir, which can be used to stop the condensing units of a heating or cooling system. Refer to the thermostat and heating slash cooling units operating manual for expected switch operation and wiring connections. Connect the switch leads in series to the low voltage thermostat circuit as specified in the heating slash cooling units operating manual. For the second option, you can reconfigure the switch to the NC terminal to close a low voltage circuit in the event of a high water level, which could activate an external alarm or relay. Use the following procedure if an NC configuration is required. Remove the pump's motor cover. Support the switch and carefully change the lead wire from the NO terminal to the NC terminal. Reinstall the motor cover. Connect the switch leads in series with the low voltage external component as specified in the components manual. Place the Attention Service Technician label included with the pump on the outside of the access panel in a visible location. For more information, reference the owner's manual. Thanks for watching.